What's up? Good morning, Raider Nation. I am the Kabish, and this is your Raider Reaction Morning Show for February 6th, Thursday. Almost the weekend. It's almost the weekend. It's been a it's been a crazy week thus far, and we've got our first news of uh, a free agent being signed, retained, and brought back, and that is Jalen Richard, number 30. The, the kid's been around since 2016, and I thought I had seen his ceiling two years ago. And he, the, the season that he had the fumble issues, and I really thought they were going to let him go in place of DeAndre Washington coming into that season. I believe that was, what, the 18 season. Um, D. Wash got hurt. Jalen Richard gets the full go at the beginning of the season and most of the work in training camp, and he has continued on ever since. And he's continued to rise, and his stock has continued to climb. He's been a great third down back. He's He's been a nice change of pace, a little uh, gadget back out of the backfield, uh, throwing the ball. And it makes you wonder what's going to happen with the rest of the roster. Uh, what's going to happen to DeAndre Washington? Isaiah Crowell, you brought him in on a one-year prove-it deal, and oh, he proved it, all right. He proved he's fucking paper mache, and I, I don't. If you bring a guy in on a one-year prove-it deal, who who basically you're trying to prove if they can even stay healthy, and they don't, why would you even consider bringing that guy back? So I think you you, you don't even look at him. You've got Rod Smith sitting at the absolute bottom of your depth chart. He's really nothing. He he's a project. He's emergency back at best. So. DeAndre Washington, I'm curious. I would really like to see him come back, and I'd like to see maybe you pick up some youth to stick in there with him, Richard, and Josh Jacobs. But first big news in free agency this 2020 offseason, it's Jalen Richard. <laughs> speeds up now this is some good running some bad tackling but he gets to the second level and two safeties two defensive backs I mean have an opportunity to close this hole for him and he's through it like a arrow watch this Laurinaitis gets blocked in the middle of your screen by the center Rodney Hudson and then right here three guys he's threw him in a heartbeat next thing you know he's hitting his head on the goalpost an unbelievable run Far over the middle. Nice play to Richard. He's got room to run. Jalen Richard. Throws and wide open with the catch is Richard. And room to run. There goes Jalen Richard. So somebody told me yesterday that there was a uh, there was a queef parade and a bunch of queefs running around and dressed up in their little fucking Ronald McDonald outfits and ketchup and mustard looking motherfuckers and you know it is in Missouri so there is your you know large percentage of you know queef and meth addicts so is that what we have here just maybe it brings all kinds out of the woodworks especially when you're talking about you know, a fan base like the fucking queefs. Nice 
That's the only old. This is better than the halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's going on? Huh? Oh! Oh! <laughs> I stumbled across this, and this was just gold. Uh, Stephen A. just fucking basically guts the entire uh, Chargers franchise in, in their ineptitude to basically even be a functioning franchise. Just, just a little slice of awesomeness I wanted to throw in the show. Check this shit out. Can I, can I, say, this, can I say this about the, the Chargers? And this is not uh, football analysis yeah. right here. But I just need to say this. I need to get this off my chest. Um, I don't think anybody should want to go and play for the Chargers. Why? Because I think that sports is supposed to be exciting and nobody goes to watch them. Lakers are one. <laughs> Dodgers... Trojans, Raiders, even though they're not in the market anymore, more yeah. popular than the yeah. Chargers. Rams, Clippers, Angels. Now, I'll be, they were in San Diego at the time, right. but people knew they were coming to L.A. It's time for Prime. Yo, this is Prime, and this is the Prime Cut. It's kind of funny, though. <clears throat> There's two big trades in sports. One of them being in Major League Baseball, where Mookie Betts, who was the MVP for the Boston Red Sox, gets traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers, along with David Price, who's a pretty good pitcher. And then, in the NBA, the starting center for the Houston Rockets, Capella, gets traded for a swingman in Rodney Covington. Now... Can you imagine if trades like this went down in the NFL? I mean, think about it. Some of your most important players suddenly gone. And I guess you, and you get some other guys in return, sure. You know? But, like, imagine trading your MVP. Uh, I mean, it was two years ago. So imagine, imagine the Chiefs trading Patrick Mahomes this year in the offseason. Wouldn't that just be insane? You know why the NFL doesn't do those kinds of trades? You know why MVPs don't get traded in the NFL? Because the NFL is the greatest chess match there is in sports. You have 53-man rosters. You've got 11 men on both sides of the ball. And I tell you what, it takes all 16 games, and all those practices, OTAs, all of that for those 22 starters and, of course, all the other, you know, third down backs and, and Mike linebackers and nickel corners and whatnot else. All, all those guys have to be on the same page. And sometimes it can take an entire season for that team to get on the same page, you know? I mean, can you really say that the teams in the playoffs, if you will, it pick any one of them, uh, played, I don't know, I think they all tend to get better towards the end of the season. You know, all teams are playing better at the end of the season. At least they're supposed to, you know, barring in injuries. So, imagine trading your quarterback or your running back or just just mid-season, you know, your starter. It, it's rare. It's rare when you see, especially in, like, big, big groups of guys, you know, like, these are multiplayer trades. You know, the names I mentioned were just the headliners. There were still... You know, uh, I think it was a four-team trade in the NBA. There was, I don't know how many teams were involved in the Major League Baseball trade, but, I mean, there was more than two. I mean, it, I mean, you couldn't have a four-team NFL trade that contained MVPs in the NFL. That's just, you can't do it. You can't do it. But I tell you what, man, it makes it for the most exciting uh, offseason, well, I guess for uh, basketball, and in baseball, when stuff happens like that, I mean, that's just uh, that's what's going to drum up those uh, viewers for those guys. In the meantime, the NFL just keeps on trudging along as America's pastime. I mean, even that major trade in Major League Baseball, which used to be America's pastime, was still, I don't know, second or third in line when it came to the sports news. So, you know, hey, 
The NFL is a whole nother animal, and it's a beautiful thing. Now, coming up soon, we have the XFL. I'm going to dig into the XFL, check out all those rule changes, tell you about all the big names that are actually, you know, playing and coaching, like uh, Josh Jacobs, I remember, quarterback from the, in, in the NFL. I think he was in Tampa Bay for a minute. He's in the uh, XFL. I mean, Bob Stoops is coaching in the XFL. So, yeah, there's that all starts this coming weekend. I got more of that coming soon because, hey, remember when I was like, bye, football. Well, there's more football. There's spring football, and it's the XFL. Who would have thought? It's a brand new thing. Let's see if it lasts this time. At least past, I'm going to give it three seasons, and we'll see after that. Anyway, so you can't trade like uh, you can in other sports uh, the same way you do in the NFL, and football's not quite over. Anyway, that's my prime cut. I got my show coming up next week. I got to take it indoors because I tell you what, I am freezing right now. Have a great rest of your day. Prime out. not be a Raider Reaction Morning Show without a D-bag of the day. You, sir, are a fucking douchebag. I heard um, these people out here that continuously Brady this, Brady that. Dude, for real? Whose team are you on? And you know exactly what he did to us and here you are like, oh yeah, we want him. No, we don't fucking want him. So douchebag of the day goes to all them damn losers requesting Brady. Get the fuck out of here. I'm rocking my jersey today of the real Offensive Rookie of the Year for the 2019 season. I, I don't give a fuck what the vote was. You can go look at the stats. Kyler Murray wasn't even better than Gardner fucking Minshew this year. And how you put him with a guy that, that rushes for over 1,100 yards and, and even missed three fucking games, man. He was a game changer, uh, breaking most broken tackles in the league. I mean, the, the dude was phenomenal. How you didn't vote him, I, I have no idea. And uh, unfortunately, fucking donkey head feels the same way. Hey, get this right. Nope, Josh Jacobs should have won it. 1,150 yards, 1,150 uh, rush yards despite, despite mm -hmm. missing three games. He also had the third highest rush yards per game behind Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. And the Raiders went from four wins to seven. Mm. And uh, Cardinals went from three to five and a tie. Mm, that's uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Any yeah. better with the Raiders. Sometimes I wonder what I'd tell my younger self if I ever saw him. I'd tell him, Josh, it's going to be hard growing up homeless. But you got to believe in yourself. Be tougher than the world around you. In that field, that's your proven ground. Push yourself to be someone. And I promise someday, you will. And now, to send you out to start your day, we wrap up today's morning show with the Raider. Quote of the day. Football is easy if you're crazy as hell. One of the greatest athletes to ever grace the field, the one, the only, Bo Jackson. Have a kick-ass day, Raider Nation. Until next time, I'm out. Peace, love, Raider Nation.